Hey everyone, Steve here with Phantom History. Thanks so much for checking us out on YouTube, and if you enjoy our content, make sure you subscribe. I also wanted to remind you that Patreon subscribers get access to bonus content, and we have a newsletter that you can subscribe to that will let you know when a new episode drops and when that new bonus content is available. Enjoy this episode. While closing for the night, two bartenders were doing what they do on any given night once the busy nightlife of Ybor City finally fades into silence. They cleaned the bar, placed the liquor bottles back where they belonged, and swept the floor. It was just like any other night. Quiet. That was until they heard one sound that at any other time wouldn't spark that much interest. But after 2 a.m., the sound of a solitary key striking the string inside of an old piano would catch anyone off guard. It was especially surprising to both since they were the only two left in the business and neither one was near the piano. For Stone Soup Company owner Ilya Goldberg, the piano is a major contributor to the strange happenings that have been reported since he relocated his restaurant and bar to the building on 7th Avenue in Ybor City in 2017. He has been told that the man who used to play that piano is still tied to the building that was built in 1926. And with construction of the brick building finishing just as the Tampa Mafia Wars were heating up and kicked off what is now known as the Era of Blood, there's a good chance at least one, if not more, murders have been committed in the very spot where people now enjoy soups and sandwiches along the bar and retail spaces lining the sidewalks of Ybor City. I'm Steve Blanchard. Welcome to Phantom History. Ilya Goldberg is a skeptic. The business owner admits that when his employees first came to him with stories of strange sounds and feelings in his restaurant, he had his doubts. But the stories were consistent and eventually he was convinced that something unusual was happening at Stone Soup Company, especially when he himself experienced the unexplainable. The first major thing that happened, it was pretty big. Um, it was a rainstorm and water started going down through literally the light fixtures downstairs. Mm -hmm. So we have a mezzanine, we have an upstairs downstairs, right where we're sitting right now, right below us is my office. And the water was coming through and we couldn't figure it out. So everybody started complaining about the water. And I said, well, it just rained, maybe it's just a leaky roof. And they were like, you don't understand, it's like really coming down, like something's on. Ilya immediately contacted his landlord, who runs a bar nearby. And that landlord encouraged him to call a roofer. But when he returned to his business a short time later, a member of Ilya's staff approached him and shared that the water situation was finally under control. So when I came back, my staff had said, we fixed it, we fixed it. I was like, what could you possibly fix? And they said somebody had turned on the hot water part of the sink, the double sink or triple sink upstairs in the upstairs bar where we're sitting here. And I said, well, that's crazy. I'm like, this place was a storage closet. And there was literally stuff so stacked up everywhere all around that bar that it literally would have taken someone about 15, a good 15, 20 minutes just to move stuff to get to the sink. Now, mind you, we'd never turned the sink on before. The plumbing wasn't even really hooked up from upstairs, downstairs. We had no intention of using this at that time. Like, it was just going to stay storage or maybe a future second kitchen. Researching the history of the building that houses the Stone Soup Company is difficult. Records going back to the turn of the 21st century document its life as a number of different restaurants. Prior to that, old photos show that it operated as retail space and as several different bars. But finding specific newspaper articles or interesting historical documentation about the address has proven difficult. However, Ilya believes that he has learned what wanted to get his attention. The source of his information? A friend of his teenage daughter who shared that she is in touch with the paranormal. My daughter, she said, well, I have some friends that really want to come here and hang out or eat. Would it be okay to invite a couple of my friends? I said, of course. So on a Friday or Saturday, I remember it was a Friday night, 
three of her friends showed up. They were all eating, and they said, well, do you mind if we sit upstairs? I said, no, no problem. So they're eating upstairs, and the one girl had a, a tablet open, like a little notebook, and she was just writing stuff, and just random thoughts and words and like look kind of chaotic and I said to her I said, what, what are you doing and she goes I'm just writing things that I'm feeling things that are coming to me because I, I read people I read situations I can feel things and that's when she kind of starts saying well I have this whole history on this place kind of like written out of things that have happened here things that I feel I said oh that's so interesting and I start telling her some of the things we've experienced and she said well she goes back in like the 20s there was a murder here of a gentleman who was playing the piano and she said these two gentlemen came behind him and they, they, they shot him and all three are still here and they're not happy. So I don't know if that's necessarily that, I don't know if they're that unhappy, but she kind of felt that, she sensed that. Normally, Ilya would have brushed off the supposed psychic feelings of his daughter's young friend. But despite being very busy running his business that night, he was struck by the explanation given by his young friend. What she shared seemed to tie directly into what his security cameras recorded the night the water flowed into his office. We've got two cameras going for us. I said when we built this, when we had the camera system put in, we put, we intended on using this bar at one point. So we have a camera right over the bar, literally right over the sink. And we have another camera on the stairwell up to the spot. So I said, well, whoever turned this on will definitely see. And they had to have done it within the last hour because we couldn't have accumulated, the water would have been too great, you know, if, if all of that. So we both went into my office, turned on the camera, we, we went back almost four hours. We watched it, we fast forward, rewound it, watched the whole thing, and not a soul, not a single person even went up the stairs, not even into this built room, but not even up the stairs in that, that span of time. So we both looked at each other and said, like, how did that just happen? because we thought maybe a box fell on the sink and hit the, but even the way the stems are set up, you have to push them up. So the whole thing didn't make any sense. And when we watched the video even closer, there was three red lights and three being maybe those three, three red lights dancing around, like two were kind of moving around the first one. So there was definitely an energy of some type of orbs or something was moving around the, on the mezzanine. And so there's definitely activity and action. And then um, we checked back about three or four days later because I was watching cam on something else and uh, they, they were gone. So it's funny that when we saw the orbs, there were three and she mentioned three. Um, so I don't know if, that's, if there's any correlation there. The experience with the running water turned into inspiration for the Stone Soup Company. Soon, a new bar opened in the one-time storage room. The Spookeasy, as it's called, is a gothic-themed tea bar that hosts a diverse crowd throughout the week. Vampire clubs, fans of gothic attire, performers, and those who just enjoy a change of scenery all pass through its door, which just so happens to be hidden behind a bookcase. It's a popular spot that thrives particularly on the weekends. While Ilya and the owners of the Spookeasy have embraced the eerie circumstances around its creation, the strange happenings under the roof of the Stone Soup Company have continued to literally haunt those who work there. Which brings us back to the piano that was in the building when the Stone Soup Company moved in. The spirits his daughter's friend felt, she said, were attached to that piano, and she urged Ilya to never sell or remove the piano from the restaurant. Interestingly, Ilya had tried to sell that piano and had several interested parties, but each time, no sale was ever finalized. Each time a prospective buyer would come to the restaurant to test the piano, it would sound like it was off key, Ilya said. But any other time the piano was played, he said it sounded fine. And while he admits he has never heard the piano playing by itself, he has had several employees share their experience. And we were going to sell it. She goes, it's a good thing you did because it's kind of attached itself to the piano, which I don't know what that means. But uh, so, yeah, they heard like leaving at night as they were closing up. They'd maybe hear like a, a key or two on the piano go off and they could, you know, they still looked at each other like there's no one there. Other strange occurrences have manifested in other areas of the building as well. And they are seemingly unrelated to the piano. Strange sounds 
moving objects, and electrical oddities have permeated the restaurant, but most of these strange occurrences appear either upstairs or in the back part of the building. Um, but just really odd stuff, like the other day, Kat, who's Evan's wife, who set this all up, this is uh, easy. She said she heard in the corner there, she heard almost sounded like a plastic, like a plastic bottle, like a water bottle or like a liter bottle, like fall to the ground, like hard, and like that sound of that plastic falling. And she said she walked over there because it was strange to her, we don't have any plastic over there, and she didn't see anything on the floor. It was just, you know, not, not really there. Um, my, my girl and I were sitting here in this room and we had our phones, much like your phones on this, on this uh, table. And um, my phone was next to her phone. And all of a sudden we both, and there's even witnesses to this, and her phone starts calling my phone. And I just looked at her, I said, how did you just do that? And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, why are you calling me? We're next to each other. And she just starts laughing. She goes, I didn't call you. And we both saw the phones ringing at the same time. So I was like, that was really weird, you know, stuff like that happening. Um, and that was my personal experience. I definitely felt that. She feels a lot more. So she, she's been touched. You know, she felt someone touch her and she turned around and there's no one there. She's heard, um, you know, names or she's heard voices. If someone says something, she turns around, there's no one there. Um, you know, she's, she's felt a lot more, but she's more in tune. She's more, I think, friendly to it. Um, and um, the other night when one of my closers who was getting trained for the first time, Gage, he said him and Amanda were downstairs and we have like um, almost like uh, Western doors that open up like in the server area, they self-close. And we only have one door because the staff did one of two doors, it was inconvenient. So they said that when, um, when they were closing, the one door swung like almost violently open, like hard, where they heard it and they both freaked out. And then they said the temperature dropped like 10 degrees. So that really kind of spooked them pretty hard. And they were like, okay, let's hurry up and get out of here. So it's just been like really, uh, really interesting, the, you know, events that have happened that have, uh, and you know, the other staff have said other things. It's just hard to pick up on everything. And that means the staff at the Stone Soup Company pays attention to every strange feeling, sound, or experience. And they are always happy to share those with coworkers, visitors to the restaurant, and even with curious podcasters. We're just not afraid. I mean, I think because it's Ebor and because it's, it, there's so much activity here and everybody has a story, we really, and we're still kind of young, even though we've been around for 10 years, we, we wanted to have a story. And so as the stories evolved and developed, we decided to just say, okay, we should just share that. And as long as it's not hurting anybody, you know, uh, people are fascinated. Kat was, uh, you know, using a, uh, I think, um, like one of those uh, shakers or something. And it flew like too far. Like it flew further than it should have. Like it fell off the top. And it like went from the bar like out like 10 feet and that's not something you would have even if it accidentally like fell off of it it would just be like a little fall like just to the ground it wouldn't fly like halfway across the room so that, that, you know, stuff like that you know little things little things um weird you know just uh, weird things where something will fly off the wall like uh we'll put like a bunch of our awards up and like no one walks past it and we come in the morning and like two of them are on the ground and the glass is shattered Again, it just kind of, you know, we, it's, at some point it's kind of hard to tell whether it was lightning and a big storm or now you're starting to look at everything thinking everything is haunted, everything is happening. I mean, we, we're, we're a little lighthearted about it. I mean, I think it's gotten to the point where now we just kind of, you know, laugh about some stuff and, and we don't take it too seriously. So we just kind of take it tongue in cheek unless it's like a major event, like the water thing, the temperature dropping, those events are definitely non-explainable they're, they're for, for us they're definitely related to something else could whatever is still residing within the walls of the stone soup company and more specifically the spookeasy be a spirit that dates back to tampa's mafia days and its era of blood or is there something beyond the Mafia Wars of Tampa that has latched onto the restaurant and bar that Ilya Goldberg and his staff just haven't unearthed just yet? It's hard to say, but one thing is for certain. 
The piano that liked to play a note or two for the lingering staff members closing up for the night is now forever silent. Its strings and brass brackets have been removed and replaced by cords and lights that now serve as a table of sorts for any DJ that plays an event within the venue. But that doesn't mean that whatever still lurks at the establishment at the 19th block of 7th Avenue in Ybor City doesn't have other ways to make itself known. And those signals from beyond may only make the restaurant, its bar, and the spookeasy even more popular than it already is. Phantom History is researched, written, and produced by me, Steve Blanchard. Music is courtesy of Shane Ivers of SilbermanSound.com, Chad Crouch, and Raphael Crew. If there is a mysterious location that you think would make for an interesting episode, please let me know by emailing podcast at phantomhistory.com. You can also follow this podcast on Instagram through my podcast handle, at Phantom History, and see photos, news articles, and other extras on the podcast website, phantomhistory.com. In addition, I invite you to like the Phantom History page on Facebook, where you will receive updates, photos, participate in discussions, and more. Please consider giving Phantom History a five-star review on whatever platform you use to enjoy podcasts. And thank you for listening. Hey, Steve here. Thanks so much for checking out that content. And before you go, I wanted to let you know that if you become a supporter of the podcast through Patreon, you'll gain access to bonus content. And if you subscribe to our newsletter at phantomhistory.com, we will let you know when that bonus content becomes available and when a new episode drops. And one more thing, I'm always looking for ideas for future episodes. So if you have an experience or a location you think that I should focus on, please let me know through the website or you can email me directly at podcast at phantomhistory.com.